guys, it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing my June book haul. Now for the month of June, I have some very exciting books to show off. I would say primarily they're all new releases and I'm looking forward to picking up all of them. Quite a few of them are also from my recent book shopping trip I did around New York City. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. And of course, the first five books I'm going to show off are the June selects from Book of the Month, who is also sponsoring this video. I'm not going to lie, the June picks are absolute knockouts. So many of them I want to just read right away and completely wreck my DBR. But if you guys are not familiar, Book of the Month is an online bookish subscription service. They essentially curate five titles every single month, always hardcover, always new releases from a variety of genres, authors, and voices within the community. You can select one book for $14.99 and add up to two additional books at $9.99 each. They also have new release add-on titles every month as well. Not to mention you can also access their entire and expansive back catalog of books as well. You can purchase those and have them sent directly to your door. Of course, if if you're not interested in any titles that month, it's very easy to skip. And per usual, I do have an offer code for you guys. I now officially have a custom code. If you use the code Peruse Project, you can get your first box with Book of the Month for only $9.99. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the titles because I'm not kidding. So many good ones. The first book you can select from, I feel like it's definitely one of the top books of the summer. I feel like I'm gonna be seeing this book everywhere and I'm personally really excited to pick it up. And that is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Taylor Jenkins Reid is a very beloved author. I'm personally also a fan. She wrote Daisy Jones and the Six, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and this is her new release out now. This is a story that it's set in Malibu and it centers surf culture. Specifically, we follow four siblings that are all very very famous and beautiful and loved for varying reasons. And every single year they throw this big summer party. The plot of this book actually takes place over a span of 24 hours and is set during this party. However, this year we know that it ends with the house burning to the ground. This is full of family and secrets and drama. I also feel like the surf setting really calls out to me. I don't know much about surf culture, but I'm very much intrigued to find out more. So yes, this is the first book you can pick up and one of the books I hope to read this summer myself. Next book you're able to select from is Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon. I love Nicola Yoon's YA romance. I think they're adorable and fun. So I'm thrilled to have her new release in my hands. This follows our main character, Evie Thomas, and she doesn't believe in love anymore. And this is mostly due to the fact that every time Evie Thompson looks at a couple, she can see how their romance began, but also how it will ultimately end. Given this knowledge she has from her vision, she essentially views that love isn't worth pursuing because it always ends in heartbreak. As Evie works to reconcile this newfound ability, she also begins taking lessons at a dance studio. There she begins dancing with a boy named X. X is everything that Evie feels she is not. He's passionate, he's daring, he says yes to everything, even saying yes to entering a dance competition with a girl he barely knows. Falling for X was definitely not a part of Evie's plan, especially with her visions of heartbreak, but as these two characters begin to dance around each other, Evie begins to question everything she believes about love and life. This just sounds adorable. As I said, I love Nicola Yoon's stories. I feel like this is going to be so much about love as well as a personal journey. I also am really intrigued that this centers on dance and a dance competition. I feel like that'll add a really fun component as well. But yeah, this just feels like the perfect, sweet summer rom-com, so I'm so happy to have it. This book just sounds so good, and that is Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian. The story of Camelot is hers. This is a feminist reimagining of one of the Arthurian legends. And honestly, the first part of this synopsis is what sold me immediately, not to mention I love classic retellings, and this is definitely that. But it says, everyone knows the story of Arthur who is destined to be king, or Guinevere who betrays him with his most loyal knight Lancelot, or the bitter sorceress Morgana who will turn against them all. But not many know the story of Elaine, who is a sorceress herself, but she carries the heavy burden of seeing the future. And she is able to see the the destiny of all of her friends' futures to come. The mystical island of Avalon, Elaine runs free, basically pursuing all of these different prophecies of her friends. Fast forward now, all of them kind of go on a journey together to try to reclaim Arthur's throne. This just sounds like everything I love in a book. I feel like this is going to be magical, dark, full of atmosphere. And again, I just love a reimagining and reinterpretation of a classic tale and story. So this, 
I cannot wait. The next book you're able to select from is another very exciting and much anticipated release and that is The Maidens. This is written by the same author who wrote The Silent Patient which is one of the most famous and beloved novels out there but this is a new dark academia thriller novel that sounds so intense and an absolute page turner. Honestly, the synopsis of this novel is what immediately hooked and sold me. It says Edward Fosca is a murderer. This Marina knows to be true. Edward Fosca is a very charismatic and beloved Greek tragedy professor at Cambridge. He is adored by staff and students alike, particularly by this female secret society known as the Maidens. Marina, a brilliant but troubled group therapist, becomes fixated on this secret society when one of their members is discovered to have been murdered on campus. Now Marina looks at the university, which she once herself attended, to be hiding something sinister behind all of its idyllic beauty. And she's become convinced, despite his alibi, that Edward Fosca is behind the murder. And when another body is found murdered on campus, Marina's obsession begins to spiral out of control. This just sounds so dark and unbelievably wild. I really love how this is set in current day, but I believe it's going to be kind of weaving in the Greek tragedies, combining that with more of a modern day thriller element. This is a super popular author. Again, people love The Silent Patient, so I'm excited to have a book of his on my shelf, and this sounds like something right up my alley. And the last book you're able to select from is Sky Falling by Mia McKinsey. And this follows our main character, Sky, who when she was broke and 26, didn't think twice about selling her eggs and pocketing a little bit of extra cash. Now approaching 40, Sky has continued to live unrepentantly for her Herself. And in general, she prefers to go through life as independently as possible and with as little ties as possible. However, Skye's life is turned upside down when a 12-year-old girl tracks her down during one of her brief visits at her hometown to let her know that she is Skye's egg. Skye's life is thrown into sharp relief and she decides it actually might be worthwhile to begin forming some lasting relationships. This is said to have an endearingly prickly narrator in a cast of characters willing to both challenge her and catch her when she falls. This novel is a clever moving portrait of a woman and the relationship she thought she could live without. This just sounds endearing and honestly really heartwarming. I love this idea of second chances later in life and also just the idea of people coming together and forming lasting and beautiful bonds with one another. This just sounds like a book that'll really put a smile on my face, maybe make me cry a few tears, and just sounds honestly lovely. Alrighty guys, those are the five selects for the month of June from Book of the Month. I wasn't kidding, they're truly top notch this month. Again, you can use my code Peruse Project to get your first box for only $9.99. I'll have a link to their site down below as well, but let's go ahead and jump into the rest of the books I picked up for the month of June. First off is a very exciting pre-order. I have been counting down the days for this book to come out, and that is For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. This is a dark, atmospheric, kind of fairy tale sort of fantasy story, which are always, always, always my fave. I've talked about this book in many anticipated reads videos, so I'm thrilled to finally have it in my hands. The thing that really sold me about this book is truly the beginning of the synopsis. It says, the first daughter is for the throne, the second daughter is for the wolf. This follows our main character, Red, who has been raised her whole life knowing that she is going to be sacrificed to the wilder wood when she grows up. And when the day finally arrives, Red herself is actually pretty relieved as she's beginning to be plagued by a dark power that she cannot control. However, the legend is a lie. The wolf is actually a man, not a monster. Her magic is a calling, not a curse, and if she doesn't learn how how to use it, the monsters the gods have become will swallow the Wilderwood and her home whole. This again just sounds like everything I love, full of legend and magic and dark forests. I cannot wait to read this. I will definitely be reading this, I feel like, very, very soon. I pretty much say that with every book I buy, but I don't know. I just have a strong, strong feeling about this one. Next up are two books I picked up on a recent road trip. I personally love picking up books as souvenirs, just as a simple way of reminding me of different bookstores and places I visited. The first book I picked up was actually from an independent bookstore in Vermont, and it is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantle. This is a book that has been on my radar for a very long time. This and its sequel won the Man Booker Prize back in 2013, I want to say. It's a very beloved, very lauded work of historical 
fiction that essentially reimagines the life of Henry VIII, as well as all of the court politics and intrigue that was occurring in the 1500s in England. I am a big history lover. I am particularly really into English monarchical history. So this has always been a book that has been on my list for a long time. This is definitely one of those books where I'm surprised I haven't read it yet. I've had so many friends tell me they've read and loved this. I also feel like this might become a new all-time fave, but we shall see. I also hear this is really witty and funny, which I'm looking forward to, so I'm hoping it kind of combines some deep, rich historical narratives with a bit of humor and fun. Possibly, maybe not fun, but perhaps some wit. Um, but yeah, I'm glad I picked this book up and I'm happy to add it to my shelf as well as in general. Who doesn't love a souvenir? And the second book I picked up, I grabbed in Maine. That is The Kingdoms by Natasha Poli. This was a most anticipated release for me as well. It came out at the end of May. And this is said to be a genre bending, time twisting alternate history. It's said to be for fans of Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hugo, which is one of my personal favorite thrillers. I love weird, vague, time warpy sort of thriller novels and I feel like this has a chance to deliver that for me. This follows our main character Joe who has a bad case of amnesia. His first memory is of stepping off of a train and, and the 19th century French colony of England and the only clue that Joe has about his identity is a century old postcard and the postcard is signed with the letter M. Now Joe sets off to try to locate this mysterious individual M and hopefully locate more information about himself and his past. Again this just sounds super interesting. The synopsis itself does not give very much information at all and I'm very curious to see where the story is going to go. It's said to masterfully combine history, speculative fiction, queer romance, and more and it's overall unputdownable. So I just am really interested by this so I grabbed it when I saw it in May. And the next book I have to show off is a very exciting release. I was thrilled to open up this pre-order when it came in the mail, and that is Better Together by Christine. This is Christine's new YA contemporary story, and it sounds like so much fun. Also, this cover is thoroughly stunning, and I'm just absolutely amazed by it. This is said to be Freaky Friday meets Parent Trap, and it essentially follows two sisters who were estranged after their parents' volatile divorce 10 years prior. Jamie is an aspiring stand-up comic with a growing case of stage anxiety. Siri is a stunning ballerina from New Jersey who is nursing a career-changing injury. When both of these sisters sign up for the same remote rediscover yourself retreat in Colorado, they not only run into each other for the first time in 10 years, but their worlds are turned upside down. And they essentially decide to hatch a plan and switch places. And due to some magic, they essentially are able to travel to their respective homes, wearing each other's faces. This is a story of rediscovery, two sisters learning to love themselves, figure out their path in life. I also hear it has a bit of romance, as well as a central family component as well. This just sounds absolutely delightful and the perfect summer read. So thrilled to have this one. And the last group of books I'm just going to quickly run through as they're all the books I picked up from my indie book shopping bookstore vlog which I posted earlier on my channel and there is a haul in that video as well so if you want more information you can watch that. First is A Master of Gin, which is a turn of the century steampunk fantasy set in Cairo and basically follows our main character who is trying to save the world and solve some murders. It sounds so much fun. Also has a queer romance. I'm hoping to read this this month. Also picked up The Ones We're Meant to Find which I've already read and loved, and this is by Joan He, and essentially it's set in a futuristic dystopian Earth after a climate crisis and follows two separated sisters and alternating perspectives in their search of trying to find each other. This is dark and haunting and combines quite a few different genres, I would say. Really kept me guessing all the way to the end. I also grabbed Interior Chinatown by Charles Yu, and this follows our main character who suddenly shifts from being, in his mind, a background character in everyday life to the star of a show show and essentially allows him to also begin to uncover the secret history of Chinatown and his family. This of course won the National Book Award and I've heard amazing things about this so I was thrilled to grab this at the bookstore. I also grabbed The Way Back which is about two siblings making a perilous journey through the far country which is the land of demons. It sounds absolutely atmospheric and full of wonderful writing. Also nominated for a National Book Award. Also grabbed A Desolation Called Peace which is the sequel to a memory called Empire 
Fire, which I read and loved last month. This is the sequel to a space opera series, basically following our main character, Mahit, who is an ambassador to a new planet, and she's essentially thrown in the middle of a political crisis, as well as a murder mystery, and is trying to save a life. The first one was absolutely wild. Cannot wait to pick up the sequel, which I definitely hope to do soon, but... This series is great. And the last two books I'm going to quickly show off is Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zauner. This is essentially a coming of age memoir recounting Michelle's decision to move home to take care of her dying mother, as well as reconciling with her own identity, as well as searching for the path she wishes to take next. This is said to be so emotional. I've also heard excellent things about the audiobook for this. I'm really thrilled to have this in my collection, but I also feel like I need to be in the right mindset before picking this book up, as I feel like this is going to be an absolute tearjerker. And the last book I grabbed from my indie bookstore shopping day was A Declaration of the Rights of Magicians. This is a historical fantasy novel basically set during the Age of Enlightenment, following different philosophers and magicians as they begin to get involved in different political movements. This is said to be a poetic tale of justice, liberation, and dark magic. Sounds cool. I'm hoping to have a bit better luck with this kind of dense historical fantasy than I did with Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, but we shall see. Alrighty guys, that is my June book haul. Let me know down below some books you've picked up recently as I would love to know and I will see you guys soon with another video soon. Goodbye!